he's involved in crypto. And crypto is which is scam. like it is a lot of scam. The, 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 the scam probability in crypto is high. It's high. So yeah, I'm not saying it's all scams, but no. that I would leave that distinction for um for v, what are those fucking NFTs? I think <laughs> NFTs that's that's like eighty percent scam. Except for people. People's legit. What is going on, ladies and gents? Welcome to Collectors Gone Digital. My name is Josh, and on today's episode, we are covering another controversial topic, and that's a question that seems to be haunting the community. Are VV collectibles true NFTs? Today's episode may seem a little tedious to some, uh, and that's just because we are covering a lot of definitions. In order for you guys to really understand whether they are NFTs or not, you got to understand the basics. So the difference between non-fungible and fungible what the blockchain is, what a ledger is, what metadata is, what tokens are, we cover it all. So we don't wanna waste any time. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So for us to nip this question in the butt, we gotta first ask ourselves, what is an NFT? They stand for non-fungible tokens, and they're assets that have been tokenized via a blockchain. Now, non-fungible tokens, what are tokens? So they're the unique identification codes, the ID that you'll see on the blockchain, that's created from metadata via an encryption function, that being a level of security. Now we've identified what an NFT stands for, what tokens are, but metadata is another term that we hear quite often. Metadata is data that describes other data. So if you take Stacker as an example, a platform that we just recently covered, Stacker provides metadata. They're providing info on VV's data. So again, NFTs are assets that have been tokenized via a blockchain, or in other words, they have been minted and given an identification number. This number is something we'll talk about later on in the episode. Now these tokens or identification numbers are then stored on a blockchain while the assets themselves are stored in other places. So if we use our VV collectibles as an example, the identification number for each collectible in my collection is going to be stored on the blockchain. But when I click on that ID number, I'm only going to see an image for my collectible. Something else we'll cover as well. But the actual 3D asset that I can augment into reality is stored on the VV app. If VV disappears tomorrow, the 3D asset will as well. However, that is conditional because VV does have a term in their contracts with their licensors that allow their licensors to set up a third party server if this does happen, that would allow them to still host the collectibles and keep them running. If the licensor does not choose to do that, you only have access to the image that is on the blockchain. More on this later on. The connection between the token and the asset is what makes them unique now in terms of what I was just talking about with the 3D asset being on VV and the image being stored on the blockchain, a comment was left on my last YouTube video talking about uh, Elon's comment on Joe Rogan's podcast. And Elon was talking about this exact point. So before we discuss anything else, I'll show you guys the clip just to give you guys a little bit more context. Except for people. People's legit. I mean, but it gives you like digital art. Yeah, people's stuff is great. Um... But I mean, NFTs. The funny thing is that the NFT is not even on the blockchain. It's just a URL to the to the, the JPEG. So it's not even like it's like you should at least encode the JPEG in the blockchain, because like if the URL, if the company housing the image goes out of business, you don't have the image anymore. All right. So first thing I want to define is the difference between fungible and non fungible. So first off, fungibility is the ability of a good or an asset to be readily interchanged for another of its kind. That's the key part. So goods and assets such as cars and houses that aren't interchangeable are non-fungible. So here's an example. Let's say I like my neighbor's house more than I like my own. And it just so happens that my neighbor feels the same way. He likes my house more than he likes his. I can't just walk over there and be like, hey, want to trade homes, right? Because the exact dollar value of each home is different right down to the dime, even though it's on the same street. 
So the value is not one to one. Now I have Bitcoin on screen as an example of a fungible item. And the reason for this is because you can exchange Bitcoin for another token on the same blockchain for the exact same dollar amount. You're not gonna end up with the same amount of tokens afterwards, but the amount of tokens that you're holding will equate to the same value that you were holding before, minus the gas fees or whatever. But in this case, those tokens are interchangeable. They're fungible. Now, I do want to be clear about something because we were just talking about Bitcoin and crypto and stuff like that. And then we were also defining what a token is. But a non-fungible token is different from a cryptocurrency token. So they are not the same thing. Cryptocurrencies are tokens as well, but the key difference is that two cryptocurrencies from the same blockchain are interchangeable, which was my previous example talking about exchanging Bitcoin for another token. They're fungible. Two NFTs from the same blockchain can look identical, but they are not interchangeable. So let's use Superman as an example. If I'm holding mint number 41, the first ever public mint available, that collectible is going to be valued differently than mint number 6,000. Despite the fact that we're talking about the exact same collectible, they look the same. The only difference is the mint number. But because of that, they are not interchangeable. It's not realistic for me to send a message to the person holding mint number 41 and saying, hey, I got mint number 6,000, want to trade? Because mint number 41 is obviously valued much higher than mint number 6,000. So this is the exact reason why houses, cars, and tickets can all be NFTs as well. Take tickets as an example, sports tickets, concert tickets, right? Let's say I'm sitting front row at a concert or courtside at a basketball game. I paid more for that ticket than somebody sitting way up in the crowd. Now, picture that person who's sitting way up in the crowd, walks down to the court side or front row and goes, hey, I know I paid 45 bucks for my ticket and you paid 4,000 for yours, but want to trade? Both of those people are holding tickets to the exact same game, but they're valued at completely different amounts. AKA, those tickets are not interchangeable. They're non-fungible. Now, a big part around determining whether our collectibles are true NFTs or not is understanding exactly what the blockchain is. Why? Because this is where all the information is stored. So a blockchain is a distributed database or ledger shared among a network of computers. So they're actually best known for the crucial role in cryptocurrency, but they're not limited to crypto. So blockchains can actually be used to make data in any industry immutable. And immutable is a term used to describe your inability to alter that information. You can't change it once it's set live. Now, if you guys couldn't tell, I did emphasize the word ledger there. And that is because understanding what a ledger is, is a pretty simplistic way of understanding what the blockchain is. So a general ledger represents the record keeping system for a company's financial data. So it provides a record of each financial transaction that takes place during the life of an operating company. And it also holds account information that's needed to prepare the company's financial statements. Think of it this way. The blockchain is essentially a digital ledger. Now, for those that have been with Vivi for quite some time now, you guys know that the older collectibles were actually minted over on the GoChain blockchain. This was prior to the migration to IMX, who we'll cover next. So the GoChain is a standalone blockchain. I need to emphasize these words, guys, just because I really want to provide a solid and conclusive answer to this question. But it's a standalone blockchain with a next generation smart contract platform. It's built upon an improved Ethereum code base that solves the scaling problem with immediacy. Now, to be honest, if you don't know what that means, you don't really need to. I've just made sure to include it for the tech junkies. But if you guys want a more simplistic explanation, you can visit VVpedia, which I'll have linked in the description down below. Now, if we head over to that article, it just breaks down some stuff. You guys can read this on your own time. Like I said, it will be linked down below, uh, but I just wanted to read this part here. Uh, the GoChain is a fast and carbon neutral blockchain on which VV collectibles used to be stored on before they were migrated to Immutable X on December of 2021. And that's why I was saying, if you guys don't really understand the stuff on this slide, it doesn't really matter just because it's old news. What's important to note though, is the first point. It's a standalone blockchain with a next generation smart contract platform. 
every NFT has a smart contract. Now we did mention that things were migrated over to Immutable X, which is a layer two scaling solution. So it provides an NFT infrastructure on the Ethereum blockchain, and their mission is to power the next generation of Web3 games. How? They aim to improve both the experience of users and developers by offering seamless gameplay, lightning fast transaction speeds, and gas-free, fully carbon neutral NFT minting. Enough said there. But we did say layer two scaling solution. So what exactly does that mean? So when you hear layer one or layer two, both are blockchain scaling solutions that are improvements to the processing speed of a cryptocurrency blockchain network. The difference between the two layers is determined by the action. So I'm going to go slow here because some of this is a little wordy. But layer one includes updates such as changing the block size or consensus mechanism or splitting the database into multiple parts, also known as sharding. Again, for the tech junkies. Layer two includes the bundling of transactions, parallel blockchains, which are also known as side chains, and then the handling of off-chain transactions, also known as state channels. So again, what you're doing will determine what layer you're on, but both layers are scaling solutions to improve the processing speed of that network. So if we head back over to Immutable X, they have something that they offer called a Muta Scan. And it's a block explorer where all Immutable X transactions are viewable. So the platform provides a highly secure and decentralized Ethereum layer, and it allows the users to explore and search for addresses, transactions, prices, tokens, and activities on the Immutable X protocol. So before we actually get into answering the question, are VV collectibles true NFTs? We're gonna hop over into a Muta scan just to check out exactly what info you can look at. So heading over to the platform, I just typed in VV onto the search bar just to look at random collectibles here. And this is something that you're gonna see. We're gonna have the transaction, which is the token ID, the identification number. We're gonna have the event, a transfer or whether it was minted, what wallet it went from and what wallet it went to. Now, if I click on the actual transaction number, as you guys can see, and as mentioned at the beginning of this video, the actual 3D asset is not on the blockchain. It's the display photo that you would see on the app. So if I own this all new Ghost Rider and Vivi disappears tomorrow, this image is what I am left with unless Marvel chooses to host their own server that will keep the actual 3D asset alive. It is undeniable, however, that this all new Ghost Rider is on the blockchain and minted as an NFT. So, are VV collectibles NFTs or not? Yes, they are NFTs. Our VV collectibles are on the blockchain. They're clearly minted on the blockchain. The information is there. No, not the 3D asset is there. The image associated with the 3D asset is but the actual asset that could be augmented into reality, used in the VVverse and all that, is protected within VV's centralized ecosystem. I also wanna make point that there are several other legitimate projects that are supported by IMX that don't face the same backlash that VV does. Gods Unchained, HRO, Alluvium Land. Alluvium has a well-respected fan base. They're seen as true NFTs and they're backed by the same tech. Can someone please make that make sense? Another point I want to make is that David has said time and time and time and time and time again on recorded calls that these are true NFTs. If you think that they are tiptoeing around with all these regulations with crypto and pulling buybacks in the past, if you think they're going to go through all of that for the CEO to sit on a live stream and essentially just lie straight to all of our faces about the true nature of what we're actually buying, there's no doubt in my mind that that would put Vivi into this whole legal mess and threaten the entirety of the company. So it doesn't make sense to me why the company would be so careful in all these other departments, but then say something so foolish like, yes, these are true NFTs when they're not. I do want to make the point that yes, not all the information that people want to see is available. 
I understand that the metadata for the collectibles over on the Go chain are not available. I am curious about that. But it is undeniable, like I said before, that our collectibles are on the blockchain and minted as NFTs. And in a way, it's kind of insulting to all the companies that have signed on and all the partnerships that Vivi has, including the partnership that they have with IMX, who literally says in the definition for their company that they're providing an NFT infrastructure on the Ethereum blockchain. You can't get more straightforward than that. But there's three main points that I wanna summarize here, okay? So at the beginning of the video, we defined what an NFT is. And just so you guys don't have to go back, it's an asset with a unique ID number that's been embedded on the blockchain, okay? And we've determined that VV collectibles have those unique ID numbers and you can find them via sites like Immutable Scan. Check mark. We also define the difference between fungible and non-fungible and we determine that VV collectibles are non-fungible. I can't trade my high mint Batman with a low mint holder without that holder expecting something additional in return. Although the two collectibles look the same, they do not have equal value and therefore they're not interchangeable. They are non-fungible. Check mark. And the last but not least, the blockchain. So we define what the blockchain is. We also determine that Immutable X is an NFT platform structured on the Ethereum blockchain. Or in other words, when we went from the migration from GoChain to Ethereum, our collectibles went from the GoChain blockchain to the Ethereum blockchain. So our collectibles are hosted on the Ethereum network. Check mark. Everything I just discussed defines an NFT. And I also want to throw at this point to all the people being like the 3D asset isn't actually embedded on the blockchain. It's just the image. I can understand why that's an argument. I mean, it's coming from Elon himself. But right now, that is how every NFT is set up. So if your argument is that you only get an image on the blockchain, what's your argument about all the other NFT projects? That they're not NFTs as well? If anything, the fact that VB collectibles are displayed the same way in terms of showing the PNG image only legitimizes VB as an NFT project. Because how can you say VB only shows PNGs in the blockchain, but ignore all the other projects that do the exact same thing? Again, make it make sense. Ladies and gents, that's going to conclude today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the deep dive. We covered a lot of definitions from the blockchain to metadata to layers one and two and non-fungible and fungible, but all in an attempt to answer the question, are VV collectibles true NFTs? My answer to that is yes. And I would love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I do also want to give a little update to the GCU collectors. My apologies for the delay with the new covers, guys. Uh, I did just finish moving and it took a little longer than expected, but I am hoping to get those covers out as soon as possible to you guys. So to all those people who are collecting the covers, sit tight, it's coming. If you enjoy the content, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you want to see in a future episode. And as for next, I'll catch you then.